Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another, uh, another tier lower down the rabbit hole of obsession. As I had a goal, I had a goal. The goal was 2,000 grams. I want to say that in the last installment of this, the Chronicles of the Rainbird, the ultimate weight reduction of an SCX10 Pro. I'm sorry. SCX10 Pro. It's still got pro axles. It's still got pro rails. It's still got a pro body. There's a lot of pro stuff, so we can still call it a pro. We sat at 2,086 grams, and I was thinking 86 grams. That's a... It's a not insignificant amount. It's over three ounces, and how are we going to remove that? And I thought, and I pondered, and then I said, oh, right. Money. Money. You lighten your wallet and you lighten your rig at the same time. So we have done that. Now, this is definitely an interstitial phase. Look how that high that nose is sitting on 0.8 pound springs. I can go one hole lower. I can lean one more hole back. There are two holes, but I don't think I can get to the second hole because the motor mount is in the way. We might try it anyway. So we have made some changes, and there have been some gram reductions, and we will make every effort to document them all uh, as closely as possible. It has been corner balanced. It has been put on the scales. We have determined the CGH, and some prophecies got fulfilled. I had estimations and guesstimations of how this was going to progress negatively, and those, those impressions were confirmed because... What is happening is we're removing weight willy-nilly. If there's a spot we can remove weight, we're removing the weight because I wanted to get to a point where I could start to put weight back on. I initially had a goal of 2.2, 2,200 grams, uh, final RCR weight with weight reinstalled. But we, we pulled so much weight off so fast. Uh, I pulled 198 grams off. 198 grams is, uh, is a not insignificant amount. I'm going to say that phrase a lot. Uh, roughly 7 ounces. So we pulled 7 ounces off between last time you saw it and now, which is why 0.8 pound springs have it going up. Okay, We, we did this. Uh, mostly for quieting, that's not going to remove a lot of weight. Where the weight came off is optimize the wires. Uh, I, I don't... You could maybe get a little more off, but when I stumbled upon this, I'm using the two bolts on the gearbox to hold those. It's so nice. It's so nice. Uh, I pulled off about seven and a half grams of wires, including the JST plugs, less than one would assume. A XT60 plug with a little socket on the back weighs about five grams. An XT30 plug weighs under a gram. So we're at about 10 grams removed just from the wire shortening and switching to an XT30. Uh, we have, of course, switched to a Tatu 450. Might as well, in case any... Well, so this is a Z850. It is very small. It is also packed with energies. This, with the big long wire and the XT60, weighs 86 and a half grams, and that weighs 40. So yeah. Uh, th that, that's a significant reduction of weight. 45 grams is where a big chunk of our weight reduction came from. But at the cost of effectively half the capacity of the battery. We have a little bit over half the capacity. Now, we don't have a lot of stuff to move. So we're going to see what kind of performance we get out of that little baby 450. It was just here. I don't know where it went. We had an AGFRC 50K, we had a Flash Hobby 50KG direct power has been replaced by an AGFRC 35KG half height. Notice that's not coming down. You would think half height, big savings. Well, no. If you want to get a 35KG servo that is a little on the brisk side, uh, 15 grams is the total savings there. Half an ounce. We'll take a half an ounce when we can get it. Also, 
this servo has its ears, the parts that the screws go to, his ears come up higher. So he actually sits lower, which enabled us to just go back to a normal length instead of the big long horn. We can go to just a regular 24. This is the new spec. I have to assume the new spec AGFRC horn. It's a beautiful horn. Double clamper. Uh, nice. Meaty. Yeah, I like that guy. Also switched out the drag link from the titanium 4mm to titanium 3mm with a ball cup on one side. Mostly for clearance because it is passing above the top of the tray. That servo is fast, but not too fast. It's kind of just fast enough. Watch how much it settles. Rear end kind of going down. I'm wondering point fours in the front, but move them up to like the second hole. I don't know how that's going to impact flex. We have deliberately set this vehicle up to be lower flex because even in the last iteration at 2086, when the weight, what weight there is, when that weight starts to transfer, it will just, it will just fly away from you. I think these braces were in last time, the four gram braces, but maybe they weren't. Had I shaved the chassis and then taken the body mounts to the lathe and turned the collars off to drop the body mounts down, it came out to about four millimeters lower which allowed us to cut the bottom where the little the little hoops were on the body. We corvaired the front end. Just I basically just grabbed it and went like that. Uh, it, the the body is nothing. The body is nothing. Uh, for what is, you know, it, it's closer to a cab than a full body. It's 75 grams. 75 grams for the body. Uh, you would indeed be hard-pressed to get lighter than that. Now, the CG, which we will talk about momentarily, the CG got worse. And I knew the CG was going to get worse because, as I mentioned, we were removing weight indiscriminately. And some of it was rotating mass, which I'm fine with removing rotating mass. But along with that rotating mass is also unsprung weight. We removed a bunch of unsprung weight. So these are the old fronts, which have been replaced with the Vanquish fronts. So we replaced 127 grams on the front in favor of 100 grams. So that was a 54 gram savings there. And then we replaced the rears by digging through our bin of gluons, finding some MST five spoke gluon wheels. Look at my great glue job. Thumbs up everybody. So as I said, 100 grams for that, 77 grams for the glue on so these are actually pretty light but you're not you're not getting lighter than that uh this feels like nothing it feels like it's floating through the air so when we when we take this oh also i should mention uh, these are aluminum lock nuts and any place that you basically see a shiny fastener it is now titanium so I went through a couple bags of titanium, including some on the axle, the ones on, so we were shaving a bunch of unsprung weight along with shaving sprung weight. So the CG got markedly worse, Un, unsurprisingly, because, let's get it here. Oh, that's so nice. So th this, this, is, this is all that's left. This is all that's left. And we went well, because I said, we were looking for 2,000 so that we could add axle weight to get us up to 2,200. But now we're sitting at 1,888. I'm thinking maybe 2,100 top end for the final. Because if I can find something, we don't need much. We need two foams to set this on. 23 grams for those two foams. So the total here is a poetic 1414, 1,414 grams. And there's, yeah, there's still some meat on the bones, but there's not a lot. There's not a lot. The meat, the remaining meat on the bones is right here. 
we threw money at the servo. 15 grams, but also that servo is just a better is just a better option. I think I remembered where I put the 50. Yeah. The 50 was uh the 50 was getting a was getting a little bit battered up. Uh, this servo has seen some stuff. So I will definitely, and you can see the stack height. Look how close the top is, and then look how tall that top is. So this put the horn way up high. This, we get a nice, real straight angle there with it just off of the horn. So 14, 14, 14, 15, you know, it's, it just said 14, 13, back to 14. Uh, there's, there is, there, there is meat on the bones. We've got metal bodied shocks. We could easily switch the upper links out to four millimeter or three millimeter. You know, you get out there and you start browsing and you can find titanium turnbuckles. You could find a titanium turnbuckle in that length pretty easily. I want to say, what, what did those come out to? Eye to eye about 90 or so. That's not a problem. You get some short, you get some three millimeter ends. You put a three millimeter titanium turnbuckle in there. It will drop even over the Delrin with the four millimeter because it has to use the set screws. That will drop another seven, eight grams. No, I can't drop that much. Maybe six to seven grams total. But thankfully, blissfully, we don't have to do that. We we got far enough that this guy dropping 40 the, oh, this is the other one I wanted to see. I, ha I haven't done this yet. So here's the four combo, two fronts, two rears. 356. Yeah, you could get, this feels like an anchor now at 127 grams, when the full set of four weighs 356. So we, we, we cut out a ton of sprung weight. Uh, 100 grams of unsprung weight and about 100 grams of sprung weight. So this, this augured the, the CG. The CG is, uh, compared to where it was before, I don't know if I would go so far as to say wrecked, but pretty wrecked. Let's, uh, let's get this guy sitting... Let's just put this guy right here. So we, th There, we'll put that guy right there. Total vehicle weight now sitting uh, on the, the kitchen scales, which you, we use for the corner balancing, 1888. The Sky RC system has him at 1884. Uh, 1210 on the front axle, 674 on the rear axle. I have 1215 on the front axle and 673 on the rear axle on the kitchen scales. We go by the kitchen scales because I don't know, I guess it's the size of the pad, but I have found the numbers to be more accurate. So I'm gonna trust the 1888. We're gonna take the 1888 on this. Uh, the cross weights are as close to perfect as possible. We are four grams off, uh, it, which is gonna put everything. I haven't done that. I haven't done that calculation, but that puts everything in the between 49% and 50%. I can, I can run the level one if I can find out where I put my calculator. So that would be 947 divided by 1888. 50.1. So we are crossed out. We, we see some weight movement a little odd, mostly centered around passenger rear. We, 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 will, we will source that out and suss that out. I have already ordered some bits, some brass. There's also potentially going to be a swap between Scarlet because Scarlet has basically full brass 10 Pro axles. Um, I would like to change the tubes. I would like to just chunk the front axle. I'm going to put a little bit of weight. We're going to put about 60-ish grams on the rear axle because there is no... The, 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 the CG on this is right about Right about there just past the back of the motor it's right there there's nothing back here as soon as you start to descend and you get that weight transfer there's there's just there's just nothing there's just nothing back there so weight has weight has to go back on because the cg was right around between 62 and 63 millimeters when we were in the 2086 configuration 
and the weight, uh, we are now at 82.5 millimeters. So the CG went up 20 millimeters because a sizable chunk of the weight reduction came around. 100, 100 grams of unsprung just gone. Also, all the titanium fasteners, titanium, 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 all those, all that titanium along there, just pulling grams, pulling grams. We pulled, the servo got lighter. That's another 15 grams of unsprung. So the unsprung weight loss is the thing. This is why flyweight is expensive or can be expensive. Because if you're trying to shave off every gram that you can, you're going to be taking it from both sprung and unsprung. We got the, I can't, I literally can't get the rear rotating any lower and I'm not willing to sacrifice another 50 grams of unsprung in the front because I'm gonna run out of places to put weight back on. In the front, we can brass the C-hubs, the tubes, and the link mounts, and that's legitimate. Realistically, I'm just hoping to be able to get the weight back that we lost going from alloys to these. I can tell you this, driving it on the bench, the responsiveness is responsive almost to a point where you're like, okay, now we have to reconfigure the neural pathways because when you touch the trigger, it goes, guh, 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 guh. It's, it almost feels choppy. And I think we will have killed most of the inherent 10 pro stability because 1,414 grams. And just think, 1414 for the core components. And then if we take four wheels and tires, a body and a battery, we only add 400 grams for 30, 430 grams. It is, I went, uh, yeah, let's, let's just, let's just state it as it is. We got, we got into it. We got into it and we got into the obsession of pull every gram, climb every mountain. And did we take off too much weight? No, we can use money to put that weight back on. But as it sits right now, I think there's every chance. Would you please stay on the hex, please? Or, or not. There's every chance that on the rocks, this is going to be worse than it was at 2086. 200 grams, including the portion of it that is unsprung, half of that, is not the recipe for stunning climbing performance. What I also did not measure, we have wider hex, we have eight millimeter hexes in the front and six millimeter hexes in the rear. What I did not measure is what our wheel tracks came out to. I wish every vehicle could plug in like that. So, uh, he's a skinny, skinny boy. Maybe I can hold the ruler right set up for once. We're at nine inches even, 230 in the front. I usually shoot for about 10 inches, so about 250. And we are at 220 in the rear. Uh, getting a 220 rear through a gate uh, should be fairly easy. I thought about taking these out like this is quiet the remaining noise I'm not even 100% sure where it all comes from yeah get up to there get even quieter we're still running the 10 tooth on there oh yes thank you for reminding me the numbers that you get on gears are not uh, accurate all the time. Uh, we just use a general rule of thumb. We start with an 830. So if you put in an 827, that's 10% overdrive. If you put in an 824, that's 20% overdrive. If you put in an 833, that's 10% underdrive, which is close. It's close enough to factor. We were initially running because this Creeper T transfer case has 30% underdrive to the rear axle. So generally, the 827s are very easy to find. So we put a 10% overdrive in the rear axle, which takes us down to 20. Fair? 
I thought he was still a little too peppy. So I thought, I'll dig around, we'll order and find an 833, put an 833 in the front, swap that 830 to the back, which will then be giving us 10% underdrive in the front, which will net us 20% rear underdrive, which is close enough. But if you are running an 827 in the rear axle, paired with the 30% underdrive here, it is actually 18.4% rear underdrive net. If you swap to an 833 in the front and put the 830 in the rear, you have 19.4% rear underdrive net. And the entire vehicle is now going 10.6% slower. So, will the 10 be too small? Could I go to an 11? Probably. Probably. I am not averse to tinkering with spur and pinion. It would most likely be that I would have to put in an order like, there's so little weight that the resistance of this motor feels immense. Uh, 1056 is as small as you can run, so I would be absolutely fine putting in an 11 or a 12. Bigger gears, if you were meshing a 56 with a 56, the mesh is amazing. Uh, 10 is the smallest gear that I like to run in in any situation because a 9 is not round. It's a nonagon. It's a 9-sided object. So the 10 could be smoother if it had more teeth but we got we got to run it we don't get into any tuning look there's no collapse there we don't get into any spring tuning link position shock position anything like that because the weight is going to change we are going to put axle weight back on the axles are the only place on this vehicle that weight will be added both front and rear axle because there's not enough there's not enough weight back there. 64.36, and it's actually like 64.4, 35.6. So we could easily hit 65, 66% front weight, but there is too much of a good thing. We, we have to do, this is an intermediate wheel where we will take it out and we will see what problems we have wrought sitting way too high in the front. A 0.8 in the rear would be way too stiff because there's nothing to hold back back there. Uh, I am curious slash anxious to see what the transfer looks like. We're just going to go straight to steep stuff. We're going to steep stuff. I know that it is eminently maneuverable because on this servo, like, what is, what is that angle? It's... Steep. We're we're touching link. We can't we can't steer more than that. So it's how negative is the impact of just willy nilly yank yoinking 198 grams off of a vehicle and on a near even split between sprung and unsprung. We're gonna find out right now, and then you'll see him again sometime in the short future where he'll have brass thrown back back at his axles and then hopefully then we can rest i thought for sure handling on loose was going to be negatively impacted uh, as the shocks feel fairly over damped now yeah there is a there is a notable like the, the forward drive you can feel how much less Weight is pressing down on the pins. That steer angle is absurd. Let me see if I can cut it a little wider right here. Yeah, it will not. And this is the counterintuitive stuff. I would expect that when I get into that section right there and we get a little bind, the nose binds up a little, I would expect it to try to do a little little doodle bug action it can't it feels like it can't so the ne the only negative here is that i've got to use a little bit more throttle input as there's just our have, have we have we arrived at the realm where the psi the pressure on the pins on the tire so skinny is too low perhaps but it's not even 
it's not really slippage. It's find where the tire can bite because like right here, get through that little middle spot and then just straight up. So the stability is still there. Lighter all the way around. Let me go, let me go here. I wanna, I wanna come staircase down. You can drive like an absolute hoon. Okay, I thought that there, I thought there was gonna be some amount of swap, but that, that just absolutely planted down. There we, there, there we go. You get that torque in, <laughs> and and there's nothing to stop it. I have this sneaking suspicion that center cut is going to be less of a problem. Looks so, it looks so skinny, so skinny. Come across right there. Do you see that settle? See that front just poke back down? There are half a dozen rigs in the fleet that can just make that cut through right there, and this does it. And then the turn. Okay, this we. <laughs> Ow. Had no chance to catch it. Uh, there is definitely such a thing as too much of a good thing. Okay, Daphne's over here. Daphne's definitely uses PSI to get through here. It's that little spot. It's like a little wall. We got a little wheel speed. No, a little more wheel speed. Let's see, let's see, is that front gonna stay down? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So the descent, and I saw it in the numbers. So this is not unexpected. The the CG with nose up is very good. The CG up with nose down is not good because there's not a lot of weight back there, but it's still throwing it. And then because we have so little weight, okay, I saw, where'd my body clips go? Where'd my body posts go? What nut just fell out? We, like I said, we, we, we went to extreme measures here. All right, so a black concave washer him sliding down the hill. He doesn't run any concave washers. So I either knocked that loose or it was stuck inside of him somewhere from working on him. The body clips just fell out. I don't, I don't know what happened there. I want to come around this crag right here and or uh, do something really dumb. Little push, little push. Thank God he's light. So at this weight, the forgiveness at the limit is none. There, there is no catching. You're in shape and then you're gone. You never even get to get out of shape. But as long as you keep it in shape, You don't do stuff like that. I might go so far as to call it, it's unforgiving, but I might go so far as to call it absolutely unforgiving. Is it light enough to pull this without shuttling that rear tire into the yellow? Every rig has kind of a different slot that they want to approach this. Okay, I don't think that's the slot for this guy. We, okay, all right, let's try it. Let's try tighter. Unsurprisingly, you don't take the same entry on 1888 that you do on 2600. It is. That AGFRC is strong. 
they claim 35 kg at 14.4 volts and then on the packaging it says that the servo is only rated to 14. I don't, know, I don't know what they're doing there, but I'm not worried about it. This is a 3S guy. What, we, what we've gotten is so light that I think it's rated 30 kg. So what was that, 450 ounces? On this configuration, with how light this is and how, uh, particularly how little rotating mass there is, how little we're having to push out of the way, it feels stronger than the 50. It feels outrageously strong and not too fast on the bench. It feels absurdly fast uh, on the rocks. That, that clunky eject we did back there at Tumbledore was 100% servo speed. I let go of the wheel and away we went. That was a drop into the bucket, but we didn't fall all the way in. We're not out either. Pivot it, oh my goodness. Could, coulda, coulda. It's a little, that's an axle glide. We glided the axle across, dang it. I mean, let's hit the other one too. There we go. There's a line through there. I just quite literally don't know what that line is. I'm not, I am really not used to this. And this is the fun of uh, just removing as much weight as physically possible. Uh, I didn't I didn't have a, a real handle on this at 2086. Uh, this is completely uncharted charted territory on 1888. And I think this is part of the beauty of super light. It adds capability, but it's not it is this is not a cheat code. This is just a thing. You can spend too much money and shave, what did we start at? Were we, were something like 2,400, 500 grams? Well over a pound off of the rig. You can just throw money at it until it's light, but it doesn't make it easier to drive. It makes it more capable, but if anything, it makes it more difficult to drive it because it is not forgiving You've got to get even better at micro control. I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I think we're going to knock the yellow. I could have entered higher. Yep, there it goes. It's, it is, it's starting over. It, it's, it's figuring it out all over again. He definitely does not have the same gear mesh as when he came out here. One of those, one of those big drops. Uh, definitely uh, took a little fight out of the dog. And that's a reasonable, that's a reasonable angle up there. It's not, it's not spicy. We can get through that real easy though. The lightweight, and I mean advantage, do advantages outweigh disadvantages? 100%, 100%. Uh, with a massive caveat. Uh, adding weight is inexpensive. Like putting the weight back on the axles, I'll probably spend like, uh, and, uh, and I said, Here, here's how you know you've been conditioned. I'll spend like 80 bucks and put some weight back into the axles to try to get me back up. I'm thinking 2200 again. I liked him at 2086, so maybe it will be 2100. That's the, th that'll be the goal. Uh, I don't wanna go past 65, 35. I'd like to stay in this like 64, 36. But, oh, he's real growly. He's real growly. Okay, we, where that sun point is hitting. Come in more straight at it this way. You gotta, you gotta make the, the, the breach on is the hard part. No, that's, that's too far. 
Your, be your best hope is to get it to knock back. Ooh, that transfer was coming. Okay. Will that auto flip? Mm. I mean, it's amazing how long it will how long it will hang out there. I mean, ordinarily this little uh, the little stair steps here, this can present some problems. That's just driving. You just drive up that. Or down it, whichever you prefer. Let me see right up over this face right here. There's a little notch. Ooh, that's very slippery on the high side. Get it through, over. Little, little, little hung up there. Yeah, there we go. We do love a high center. Yeah, he gets caught up in places that are potentially impossible. Let's see if we can scoot it back around. Yeah, that's that's stupid. That's stupid. And it stayed composed. We were pretty composed all the way through here. Again, ultra tight turning circle. That's a big that's a big old spider web. That's a big old spider web right there. All right, let me let me see. Let's see if we can get let's see if we can pan over here right about here. Let's see if we can just get straight over. belly hang not not the best breakover in the world this is still oe skid geometry link geometry shock positions all that stuff uh off of me uh what, what 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 more can i say except that to be aware that i don't i don't know if we can get across the top of that let's try to be aware that fly weight is the anti-bling uh, you're gonna spend an amount of money and virtually none of it will show uh, <laughs> you're buying all go and no show because you're buying lightweight things and smaller capacity things and putting a plastic wheel that came with a kit and titanium fasteners and replacing your links with lighter weight materials and it, it is going to raise that overall capability it's not going to get easier to drive it's going to become more capable overall but the, let's just lay it let's just lay it down the way it is it's expensive it's expensive to do this when he was initially built, when we built him in the build along as the rain bird, the axles remain. All of his electronic componentry has been replaced. Wheels, tires, shocks, gearbox. It is a different experience. Much as I say, everyone, if you, even if you don't own one, everyone should experience driving the styles. Everybody should try a six by six. Everybody should try four wheel steer to feel just how disconcerting it is uh, and how counterintuitive it is and how it tries to attack your brain. Everybody should try something flyweight, which to me, it, by, by Canyon terms, if it's under five pounds, if it's under five and a half pounds, it's lightweight. If it's under five pounds, it's flyweight. Uh, this guy is 4.15 pounds. 
That's the lightest, today is the lightest he'll ever be. And I, I stamp upon that my guarantee. There will be no further weight reduction measures to this vehicle. Uh, the only measures will be to put weight back on. Only on the axles. And we went through all of this. We're gonna get a tumble here, maybe. Notice how quiet he falls, because it's four pounds, there's like nothing falling. Um, this has been, this took me back. This was, this was a throwback because it, building go-fasts and putting on the carbon parts and the aluminum, fan, the, the aluminum fasteners to get the weight as low as you possibly could, buying lightweight wheels, buying lightweight bodies. This was kind of the same thing and uh, I am. I, I, I stand by it. I remain not a convert. You can build the same level of capability with heavier weight. Again, you just have to throw a bunch of money at it. You know, how much is the capability of the, of, of this gentleman above someone say like Toothless, who weighs hmm, 5.8 pounds, 5.7 pounds, somewhere in there. Uh, but costs all in less than $400 total for everything. Uh, this guy is, if we go all in, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. It's like $50 worth of fasteners on there. We don't do it because we have to. We do it because we want to. Wants over needs always when it comes to the toy cars. He's definitely got a real thing going. Uh, not for something that, that had a CG raise 20 millimeters not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I just know that uh, 1888 is not my weight. It is too snappy, too um, unforgiving. Predictable, yes, it's still predictable. But when something goes bad and it's going to, like you notice, we seem very stable. Even if we come at stuff at like harsh angles, we get up across here like this, we... We know that's coming. Self-writing is also, and just like the, what you can do with speed, because you can just glide over the top of stuff. Everything has a trade-off. I say that there's that imaginary speedometer and we are f two arrows. One is full pointed at cost and one is full pointed at labor. Lightweight is both, you know? You know, this is, this is the anti VRD really, because boy, did we have to do a lot of work and it's not directly comparable. I don't think it is super fun. It needs to be 200 grams heavier. I need to put, I need to put that seven ounces back onto the axle. Oh man, that sounds like a lot now. I said 2,100, but man, seven ounces. That's a lot. Is it not? I don't know. We'll see where we end up. When you see him next, he will be hopefully uh, closer to his final weight setup and layout. And uh, we, will, we will go from there. Thanks for joining us here in the canyon. Tune in next time. In between now and then, please one and all do your very best. Have a good one. Everybody. We'll see you again here from the canyon real soon. Uh, the lightest guy in the fleet by a lot. Uh, there are a couple rigs that are double what this guy weighs. And that is, uh, isn't that the beauty of it? We don't have to collect a whole bunch of toy cars that are all the same. We can have some that are completely different and louder than when they came out this morning, like much louder. I'm going to have to take a look at that.